Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. There has been a lot going on. We have been putting together the paperwork making sure that everything is our T's and crossed our I's, so to speak. As of late I've had quite a few individuals asking for consults, and they have been seeking help with mortgages. Some of them I have even done what I said that I do not have time to do and would not do anymore, and that is, do paperwork. As I told people, doing paperwork for someone is not as easy as you think or believe it may seem. Doing someone's paperwork requires that an individual anticipates what the response will be, and then put in a document a response to the anticipated response. In other words trying to I'll think someone that they've never met, at least that's how I do things. This takes claim, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of thought process, I don't have that anymore. I have noticed that the disease has progressed to the point to where I absolutely positively have no sympathy or empathy anymore, I've seen it coming, Phil Collins told me he heard it coming, but it's here. It's a good thing, what all the debts that are going to be occurring on this planet in a very short time, I don't need to be overly burdened by the amount of pain and suffering. What we have been working on lately, I will take the time to tell you. Amara Legion, this organization is going to be helping each of you who have needs for filing 1099C. I've seen it coming, Phil Collins told me he heard it coming. But it's here. It's a good thing. What all the debts that are going to be occurring on this planet in a very short time, I don't need to be overly burdened by the amount of pain and suffering. What we have been working on lately, I will take the time to tell you. Amara Legion, this organization is going to be helping each of you who have needs for filing 1099C. To not only acquire the I number for the main corporation, but the I number for each of the subsidiaries of the main corporation or parent corporation. Why is this important? For those of you who did the L on your documents. That means you're including every variation of that name used by the corporation and are their subsidiaries if you were specific enough to say so. You have to document that there is a debt. You also have to make an attempt to collect the debt. That is where MR Legion comes in. They will not only act as a third party to the matter, sending out documentation by a notary presentment and providing a declaration which will document their service of process upon the alleged debtor and the fact that the alleged debtor did or did not respond or did not respond on time and will provide such declarations so that you may give them to the credit bureaus in accordance with the Fair Credit Reporting Act. At this very moment they're helping to finish off the documents for the setbacks. It is our aim to have this done by the 1st of June and we hope to have everything put together and sent out to everyone. In the meantime, those of you who have setbacks, we are suggesting that you get them together. In the meantime, those of you who have setbacks, we are suggesting that you get them together. We'll be providing you all with an address for you to send those setbacks and a manner in which to have them sent, so that we can verify their quality, so as to determine the amount of tax credits being assigned to each individual. If it's in fairly tolerable new condition, you are looking at at least $75,000 in tax credits. If it's in simply fair condition, you are looking at $40,000 at least in tax credits. If it's in horrible condition, our use took an attempt to try to copy the instrument on another set of pages, attempting to fool us, we well know, as we have security features in place, that we did not tell people of previously, so as to keep the process and the integrity associated with the as honest as possible. But if it's in horrible condition then you can only be looking at receiving less than $10,000 in tax credits. Those of you who are part of the defrauded homeowners of America, or you were part in the investment onto the defrauded homeowners of America lawsuit your tax credits has not been apportioned yet but you are guaranteed to receive exactly what was spoken of in the video and more than likely the average would be $500,000 in tax credits per defrauded homeowners of America client that group is already sealed we will update you very soon on this thank you for your patience and please understand that we have not forgotten about any of you nor have we forgotten about what you've been put through for those of you who are part of the sat pack prime and sat pack omega the prime sat pack is still available and its tax credits is set at one million dollars the omega sat packs are not available but they are guaranteed at the minimum ten million dollars in tax credits will be completing your packs by june we will still be communicating with each of you 
because we will need to acquire your private foundation I number, and so we will be needing your estate information so as to acquire those numbers. These are not foreign I numbers, social security, birth date, and other essentials are necessary, it is the requirement of the Internal Revenue Service and not the requirement of our organization. So please be prepared for that request in the very near future. A lot of people have been having an issue with getting the arbitration agreements honored in court, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people have been having an issue with getting the arbitration agreements honored in court, ladies and gentlemen. We are sorry that there has been so great an effort to damage the reputation of organizations we associated with, calling them scams, shames, fraudulent, or other stupid and unsubstantiated labelings designed to cause people to have a different opinion. Many of you do not know that the judges and their own stupidity claim to be immune from libeling or slandering someone, and that is absolutely a lie. Judges are immune only when they're performing a judicial function. There is no law that would allow a judge to libel and or slander an individual and or a corporation, as a matter of fact. Such is not even close to a judicial function. Their oath of so-called office doesn't even allow them to do this. For the past two weeks it has been my effort, my aim, and my goal to pull the corporate information showing that these courts are not what they claim. That they do not operate in their so-called official capacity that the corporate capacity of the courts under a different name than the one that's on the documents and of the buildings they occupy. Shame on them. While now that we have access to their corporate information, and we can prove that they engage in corporate business, we will be taking their IN numbers for each specific corporation. And those who have had arbitration awards who would like to use our service we will document their corporate capacity, provide you with a complete history of the corporation and its finances, its IN numbers, and its buzz. You might be asking how or why is this information important? It's important because government cannot make a profit. Now, I've repeated that over and over again the people and they don't get it. Why can't government make a profit? If government were to make a profit, who would the profit go to? Many of you would say the public, but that's not the way it works. The public never receives a dime. Remember, all public services are prepaid via taxes. So, if they were to make a profit, it would have to go to the reduction of taxes. But wait, what was the last time you heard government say that they have applied some overages that they've received to help reduce the taxes? You might hear them say something stupid like that from time to time, but they never provided any proof, how do we know? Because the deficit continues to rise, is how. The other thing is, government cannot make a profit, because to do so would document that they are engaged in commercial business activities. The government commercial business doctrine holds that any time government engages in commercial business, it abandons its sovereign capacity and is to be treated as any other ordinary corporation. It abandons its sovereignty, which means that it's no longer government, because all government's sovereign. Look at the 11th Amendment. The only time the government is not sovereign is when they waive their sovereign immunity. What when does government waived its sovereign immunity automatically? When it engages in commercial business activities. To make a profit, is engagement in commerce. Go talk to the IRS. If you're in a profit, if you earned income, it's taxable. But remember the sovereign pays no taxes, but yet the comprehensive annual financial reports or CAFRs when you incorporate their notes, references, ledgers, term definitions. And do so for the past 10 years, you will see that not only have they been making a profit, but that they are privately owned, that is not government. That is why government can't make a profit, because government is not in the business to make a profit, investing in treasury securities is a gamble. Because no one can guarantee that an individual will profit from the investment which means they're taking a gamble and or a risk. Government cannot take a risk with your monies, it's a violation of the oath of office each of them have taken. Because that's a prohibition from the temporary restraining order and injunction known as the Constitution. That's right the Constitution is an injunction on government, is not a bill of rights. The Constitution is a restriction on government, it does not grant the right to anyone. That's why government can't suspend it because government has no authority to suspend the restrictions that have been imposed upon them. That's like somebody walking off the top of the building that is 12,000 feet high, and thinking that gravity somehow is going to deactivate itself because they said they don't believe in it no more. Congress does not get to walk off the side of the cliff and thinking it won't sustain an injury. 
Ladies and gentlemen, now that we have the corporate information for government, their I numbers, the corporate history and corporate officers. Now that we can prove that the courts are actual corporations, we can now apply to the Supreme Court for the state and the United States to file our petitions in the court having the judicial power. We supply them with proof that only a few of the courts in our area are corporations. We don't have to do it for all of the courts. We just have to show that we've attempted to locate a court that operates under the judicial power, and it appears that all the courts in the state are operating for profit. We highlight that the courts registry system invest and treasury securities where they get to recoup interest. That is profit. That's what the system was designed for. And because of this we have a constitutionally secured right to access the judicial branch of government. And when government makes a profit it is operating under either executive orders and or administrative procedures, which means that it's not the judicial branch. Once we apply the Supreme Court after documenting that we have no access to the judicial branch of government and for them under the judicial power to assignment for every constitution holds that. The Supreme Court of the state is where the judicial power is vested where they are to uphold the supreme law of the land, which is the common law. This is what we will endeavor to help individuals access. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now working on the new R style money orders. I have decided to go ahead and take what I've known, take what I know and to take the information that I have recently been reviewing. And to combine it into instruments that are backed by the laws delineated by Congress. You see the court must follow the intentions of Congress, they cannot deviate from that, so here is something many of you will understand. In 1933 government offered the people a notice of change in terms of agreement, it was called the New Deal, and they were changing the intentions of Congress, they cannot deviate from that, so here is something many of you will understand. In 1933 government offered the people a notice of change in terms of agreement, it was called the New Deal, and they were changing the terms of the original contract. Government did not suspend the Constitution, what government did is it gave the people an offer, if you give us your gold, we will take care of you, and the people said, good, because I'm lazy, barefoot, and bought to, shoals need somebody's take care of me, and government simply got you, all you're going to do is contribute to society, and we will give you this thing we call new law or agreement between government and the people. The Supreme Court had no say so over this new contract, because nobody in government can impede the obligation of contract. So long as the people willingly engaged in the contract, then it is a binding agreement upon all parties. It has nothing to do with some stupid birth certificate or some stupid social security number. Those are byproducts, but they are not the substance. It has everything to do with government made promises. They said a lot of stuff. One of the main things they said is that the banks receive the money in exchange for government obligations. Go back and look at what a government obligations is. Does it not say bills of exchange, drafts, notes? Bankers' acceptances, trade acceptances. You see, government obligations have nothing to do with was produced by government, it's with produced by the people. The people produced bills of exchange, not the government, not the banks. As the people produce drafts, notes, bankers' acceptances. Go and look at the definition for bankers' acceptances. You will see that these are things the people produced. But wait a minute, hold on. Under 50 U's. C-4305 it specifically says that if the president has authorized something no one can interfere with that authorization, so the president has authorized your use of these obligations under the presidential proclamation 2039, when it said that you, because you engage in the business of banking, or a banking institution, well, are not all of these aforementioned obligations, banking instruments, so that's banking business. And as a banking institution do you not have the right to engage in banking business during this banking holiday? What we are creating these instruments and we are specifically going to use at least one of them maybe to for SAT PAC members and they will receive it along with the tax credits and instructions on how to use. Finally, many people have been wondering what to do after they send on the request for accounting, ladies and gentlemen after the 14 days or up. You create a letter, you can go online and look for a 609 letter, and you will at the codes 605, 609, 611, 615 of the Fair Credit Reporting Act and any other section of that act you choose. You will let them know that you sent them a request for accounting, which requires the bank to return to you and or the creditor to return to you an authenticated record of accounting. This simply means that it has to be either a declaration or an affidavit attesting that the information in the accounting is true. If they don't provide it in 14 days they must cease from reporting on your credit profile and reporting by the credit bureaus. 
This means that it is not validated. Well, if you go over those codes, the credit bureaus cannot record it if it's validated. Now, this is free, so take it for what it's worth. If you ever send a money order or style or anything else to try to pay the obligation of debt, remember, under the Gold Abrogation Act, otherwise known as the June 5th and 6th Act of 1933, some people like to refer to House Joint Resolution 192. Ladies and gentlemen in the Senate, they have bills. A bill is just a proposal. The act dial or anything else to try to pay the obligation of debt, remember, under the Gold Abrogation Act, otherwise known as the June 5th and 6th Act of 1933, some people like to refer to House Joint Resolution 192, ladies and gentlemen in the Senate they have bills, a bill is just a proposal. The act passage becomes the so-called law. In the House of Representatives, they have resolutions, a resolution when it is passed, becomes an act of Congress. So H.J.R. 192 is not law, it has never been the law, so stop referring to it, that's what you are being ignored. You're referring to something that has no weight. In 2012 I did a video showing everyone that the act of Congress as noted above in H.J.R. had one unique difference, the act of the word notes. Along with Federal Reserve notes and circulating notes, H.J.R. 192 does not include notes. Why is this? Because to include notes would let you know that you can use your own promissory notes as was recorded by Congress in their records when enacting the act. Don't take my word for it. Go back and read the record. Then you will send a copy of these to the credit bureaus because it will document that you tendered payment. That's the issue, whether or not you have tendered payment. The first thing the courts will ask you in a foreclosure proceeding is, have you tendered payment? Have you attempted to pay? So you will bring these instruments and showing that you did tender payment. Then you will also bring a copy of the Gold Abrogation Act. The first thing the courts will ask you in a foreclosure proceeding is, have you tendered payment? Have you attempted to pay? So you will bring these instruments and showing that you did tender payment. Then you will also bring a copy of the Gold Abrogation Act, which is the Act of June 5th and 6th, 1933, which says that no one can demand payment for an obligation of any debt, that it's against congressional policy and public policy. Because it interferes with the ability of Congress to regulate the monies of the United States, and it violates public policy in that during this national emergency and banking holiday all banking activities that are normal have been suspended so the people do not have a normal means of taking care of any debt. That the payment of any debt is via a government obligations, dollar for dollar. What are government obligations? Notes which includes promissory notes, bills of exchange which includes money orders, drafts which includes close checking accounts, and bankers acceptances which includes bonds, trade acceptances, which includes a for be accepted for value. If you don't believe me go look at the definitions. Once you prove that you have made payment, it's not up to the credit bureaus to determine whether or not you have or have not, that's not their job. Nor do they have the authority to determine what is lawful and not lawful money. The law only requires that you tender payment. And according to the June 5th and 6th Act of 1933, you're tendering a payment of government obligations, which the government has valued equaling dollar for dollar, which amounts to immediate discharge. They are to take that coupon to the treasury, because it is a government. So known that you have an idea, you complete this record you give it to the credit bureaus. And if they fail to remove it from your credit profile, remember at this point nobody can foreclose on your property, because they cannot foreclose until they validated the debt. Then you sue the credit bureaus. Don't sue them in small claims court, take them directly to federal court, demand a jury trial, demand that you will let the jury know that they are obligated to remove this from your record. That they cannot give you any flack, that they cannot argue with you, they must do it because before they could put it on your record, they were to have validated the debt. And the very fact that the creditor could not validate the debt means that it was impossible for the credit reporting agency to receive a validation of the debt. Then you have the legal definition for validation, which includes a signed declaration under oath attesting to the fact that the debt is valid, which they will have no record. You're to demand or supply you a copy of the verification instrument for which they utilize to report the debt on your credit profile. Then you charge them for every month that they reported this invalidated debt on your credit profile. Now you get to pay some bills. But don't just it is for your mortgage do this for every debt being claimed on your record. Every single one. 
Pre, the website. Ladies and gentlemen it is with a disappointed heart that I apologize to all of you that we have migrated our website over to a different company. We have received several parts of prizes with such a migration. Plus there are over 250,000 files that we have to transfer. That's right 250,000 files. Over 100 gigabytes of files that have to be organized. 185 gigabytes to be exact. It is not a simple task. When we tell you that we have terms of files, most of them are emails and attachments. But these files or organization on the list, because we document everything, so that nobody and or their grandfather can say that we are trying to take advantage of anyone. It is our hope to have the site up by the 7th of April, but please bear with us. The EN.TV and the MR Legion websites will be up shortly, please be patient with us, as we cannot place those online, as they are within the same group of sites being uploaded at this time. But we understand you're wanting to have access, and looking forward to your having that access is our goal that we will see fulfilled. Ladies and gentlemen as you know 7 days a week almost 15 hours a day. But as I told all of you that this was done eventually take its toll. And no I'm not going on vacation anytime soon. But I do have to slow down because I'm doing way too much. I am at the point of realizing that I have everything I need to take care of what I need. These corporations that have been ignoring, taking advantage. I have Amazon which is literally holding on to at least $2,000 of my monies. I told them what I was going to do denominate it and understand me, so I'm getting ready to get their information. And I'm going to do my tenancy against Amazon, they can afford it but by the time I get finished with them that I do wish that they had not afforded because if, I get to do this Amazon, you better believe, I'm going to show everybody else how to do the same thing to Amazon. They don't name one of those rockets after me they keep messing with me, and if they continue after that then I will own the whole program, I simply asked people to leave me alone, to be fair. I tell them on one of Jehovah's Witnesses, attorney to take advantage of anyone, I try to be fair with everyone, I try to conduct business in a on its way. For instance, I have an individual that I was electing to work with, I wanted to help that individual were to start the business together, and individual said he I have a friend this friend can do this. It only takes him a couple of days. I said really, that's what I need, okay, since somebody your way, but I really will need for him to carry out what he said is that to do. Because this is very important this person is about to lose their home, and he says okay you can do that. So, he called him, and individual agreed he can do it. So, I told the person this to the look on the stickler for keeping my word, and for other individuals keeping theirs, I said I need you to keep me apprised of any issues. If this is going to take too long to get done I need to let me know. It's been almost two months for something we were promised to be given in less than five days. The individual to whom I put a little bit of confidence in has not attempted to communicate with me on any real level in weeks. I am not saying this embarrassed anybody I am saying this so that everybody understands that I expect the same thing out of myself that I expect that everyone else. I don't expect perfection because as I told all of you. There have only been four perfect persons on this planet in human existence. This is not talking about the angels who forsook their original dwelling place, Adam, Eve, Jesus, and myself. That's right on the last one left, so I must maintain my integrity. As far as demanding any perfection from anyone else, if anybody knows the imperfection of men, it had better be me. I'm not going to do what Paul did tell you guys about all the things I've been through and all the mistakes made, I'm just going to say that I don't have time for people not keeping the word. And if you have too much pride to come and say, I was wrong, I made a mistake, man I couldn't do it man I tried, that I really don't have time for you. So, thank you ladies and gentlemen on this evening where I'm so exhausted and tired and got to get up early in the morning to go and handle some personal business. That it will see a chiropractor so he can do some manipulations, which is actually working by the way. But he's over 160 miles away round trip, and so I can't get to them as often as I would like, but when I can, I take advantage of it. I do wish all of you the best, I know that there are some information in this particular communication that would be a benefit for you. I know that the instruments we're working on you guys are eagerly anticipating and looking forward to. But remember those instruments we are creating based on the same principles as authorized in law will only be made available to set packers who are a part of certain programs. Do not email, do not question, we will let you know. There are few of you out there who don't know how to listen, and again. As I said I don't have time for the stupidity. If I bring something to your attention on this channel or any other channel other than the official channel for the organization for which I refer.
Then you were to accept it just as it is given and don't go trying to inquire if I tell you. Don't go trying to inquire. It is because of that ignorance that you don't hear my voice anymore on this channel. I am extremely tired of talking to hard-headed, moronic, and ignorant people. I don't care if people get upset with me saying that. It's our right to get upset at the truth. Anybody who got upset at what I just said are not my people. My people know exactly what I'm talking about. They are the ones saying right now in the background. You show says the truth. If you get offended by anything I say and you don't belong here at this channel, because it's a possibility offensive things are said so as to get rid of the ignorance. No I am 100% positively certain that that's why they were said. So I am about to go have the coke and a smile.